another hot topic workshop. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Tuesday night, hot topic workshop. So I am Robin Taylor coming to you from just south of Sacramento and Smoky, California. But here we are, and I am with Miss Mel, who looks like she's muted. Let me unmute her. Hi, sorry, there was some background noise. <laughs> what you get when you're live, right? So I'm Melanie McCauley here, uh, Shelburne, Ontario, Canada. Nice, thank you. Uh, this is very exciting and fun. I love our international hot topics. Um, the topic tonight that we wanted to talk to you about is we're going to be addressing how to know if you are getting the right amounts of P, F, and C to keep your recipes and your meals balanced. What do you think That's right. And so we are past the detox phase. So in this phase, what we do is we're focusing on cutting, cleaning, and flushing, right? Uh, the Ignite phase is underway uh, for most of you. And now the real fun begins, right? So we're focusing on the burning, the sculpting, and the restoring, which is awesome. So some of you have been asking um, some questions. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit more familiar with our food choices um, and just making your own recipes, right? So this is going to be good because whether you're someone like me who likes to weigh everything, um, <laughs> kind of need to be exact on my ways. I don't know. It might be a little bit OCD stuff, but that's me. Or you might be more like Robin, who will use the, the palm, fist, and thumb theory, which works. And I, I do that as well. Um, but yeah, I'm more of the weighing type. So in general, the rules apply, right? It, it just doesn't matter what's your preference. Yeah, you know, the, the rules are the same. And this is going to be for all of the meals that we're eating and the shakes in between. That kind of goes without saying. But um, it's just nice because it's fitting for your whatever your type is. If you're somebody who's very careful and wants to make sure that all the ounces are right, we're going to help direct you on ways to keep that nice and tidy. But if you just in general want to follow kind of my kind of guidelines and know that you're going to get results overall, um, that works too. So it's uh, it's very flexible and that's the most important thing so when i am building my meal so i know we always talk about pfc so we're going to go in order here uh, starting with the protein that's usually when i think of okay what are my meals going to be this week because i do like to think ahead for the whole week is i start with the proteins like what are what am i going to prepare and do a mass prep of either a bunch of chicken and a bunch of ground turkey or knowing my husband's going to barbecue a, something with beef in it. So I kind of have that planned ahead, but I always look at what's my protein first and then build around that for whatever flavors or, you know, carbs, what kind of dish I want to make with that. So it makes it easy. And um, when I'm looking at like a a whole piece of meat, you know, like looking at a piece of chicken or a piece of maybe pork tenderloin, it's pretty easy to just kind of eyeball. Going on the general rule uh, that's put together in our guidelines is for women, the portion would be the palm size of your hand. So I have my chicken and there's maybe, if I'm using chicken tenderloins, you know, there may be like the size of two fingers. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. That's about the palm. If it's a particularly tiny little chicken tender, then I'll stick a couple together so it makes about to fill up that size. So very flexible. And then if it's a ground meat that I'm working with, because I do use ground turkey a lot because I find it very easy to prepare ahead. It's uh, very um, low in the fat. So it's a good lean meat to use. Um, what I do there is now that comes prepackaged and there is a weight available. So I know exactly how much is in the package. So I can just do the math on, okay, I have a pound of turkey. That's 16 ounces in a pound. I know that this much of my meat is really three ounces. So then I look to see, okay, 16 ounces divided by three ounce portions gives me roughly five in the package and I just kind of eyeball it, make five portions that look about equal and I'm good. 
So if I'm making patties, then I get five pretty much equal size patties. And if I cook it all ground up, I usually cook it all at one time and then portion it into five different serving sizes. So that's how I do it. What about you, Mel? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. That's for, right. for me, um, when I'm cooking the meat, so I'll do ground turkey or ground chicken, um, I'll take about the four, maybe four packages, and I'll throw it in two big frying pans. I fry it all up, put it in a bowl. Um, when it's cooled down a little bit, then I start to just, I take a baggie and I put it all in uh, the bag for three ounces, and then I roll it and it goes in the freezer. So that's- So you're actually weighing, you put that on the scale? Yep, so I have, I just have a round metal scale so I can do ounces, grams, whatever. Okay. And, uh, I just put it in the bag and, and then it's just all set. So my husband and I can grab and go at any time. If we have, if I'm cooking something like a roast beef or pork or anything like that, always make sure with those meats, it's your protein and your fat. But same thing with leftovers. I'm a leftover girl. I love, you know, all that stuff. So yeah. same thing. I'll um, measure the three ounces, put it in the bag, and then I have it. So in my freezer, I've showed a picture, but I have my chicken. So chicken breast, ground chicken and turkey, and if there's roast beef or pork, like whatever. So one shelf is my meats, and then the other shelf is my carbs. You're like the queen. And the is, yeah, and then the fridge is all my produce, right? So I keep all that, of course, in there. So that's kind of how I've, you know, used my it, protein. That's so funny. <laughs> I think when you talk about that, I think of going to like a butcher counter to say, oh. yeah. Well, that, yeah, a little that. So uh, I have to tell you that if I do wrap up leftovers, I do have them portioned um, by my fist, though. And I have one big Ziploc bag in the freezer that has a bunch of hodgepodge things in it. So I'm not yeah. going to impress any butcher shop with the way I do it, but it works. Either yeah. way, it works. So, and I love that you do so much ahead of time because. What I find with overall with Zen, the more you just plan a little bit ahead, the more you're gonna stay on plan, the less opportunity, the less excuses you're gonna give yourself to not, uh, you have so much easy grab and go because you're prepared. You know, right. and that is really an important thing. A new muscle to exercise is getting, setting yourself up to win so that you don't have all the excuses and the things to help to kind of fall off balance, fall off track that perhaps have been something that have been a problem for you in the past. So, right. and you always want to make sure, sorry, you always want to make sure that you're having your, your PF, PFC or protein, fats and carbs and take advantage of the unlimited column as well. Right. So if you're feeling a little bit hungry or whatever, you you've got the unlimited that you can add into your each meal. So yeah. 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 Very the PFC guideline is what's going to keep your blood sugars balanced and your metabolism stable so that your body goes into fat burning mode. The free or unlimited column doesn't make that out of balance or wacky. So right really want to stick to the columns and the measurements in those and then do whatever you need to with the free because that's exactly what it's there for and it might take you a little bit of time to adjust of knowing how much free is appropriate for you and it's based on you know your activity level during the day or a certain meal might make you stay satisfied for longer than others so it just takes a little bit of time the bottom line is if you're um, getting hungry at like two and a half hours, don't get yourself into hangry starving mode. This is not what this is about. If you're getting hungry, you need to eat and then just start your three hour cycle over again. Right. And know, oh, whatever I ate last time didn't quite hold me over for three hours. I need to bump up the volume on the freeze so that I get that time frame a little bit better a little bit closer to where the mark is on right. the next time. So yeah, that's good. So back to protein, last thing is our general rule, our general guideline is in our meals, we're looking for about 18 to 25 grams of protein 
per meal. And I just did a little search on <laughs> and wrote it down because this is, I do like to do this, um, of all the different kind of proteins that are available to us and roughly in a three ounce serving, how much protein you'll get. So it varies about that much. And in our Zen shake, you get 21 grams of protein per shake. So that's right on point there. So now, um, why don't we move on to carbs? You think we covered the proteins good, Mel? Yeah, and yeah, if we can talk about the carbs, because I know people get a little bit confused yeah. on you know, when to add the grains back in after the detox. Yes, yeah, and it's exciting. I know carbs have, are usually something that's a big downfall for people just because that's the way we've been conditioned to eat. And especially, I think, uh, for menopausal women, we, Carbs are, um, we crave those. They're very comforting, especially when your blood sugars get wacky. Our body naturally just craves carbs. So we have that uphill battle, but as long as you're staying PFC, that should go away. So you'll notice now that we move to the Ignite book, there is a whole new um, list of things in red that the foods that are open to us. In the very bottom column, or very bottom of the column, it's grains and calorie dense carbs. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about those quickly, just to help you get a good gauge on how you want to um, measure those if you're going to incorporate those in your in your meals. I do want to say it with this caution, however. So you've come to us because you've asked for help in losing weight. We know that if you follow the PFC guidelines you will lose weight if you stick to the plan. If you are using primarily the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables that are in the list in the right amounts, so for me, that's a fist. For Mel, that's her measurements. <laughs> it's whatever works for you is awesome. If those are your primary carbs though, you don't have to worry any more than that. Just that general guideline is going to keep you in balance overall for the weeks and it's you're going to see results if you're going to anything packaged i.e brown rice quinoa oatmeal millet or beans that is where i want you to know how to look at the weights and how to look at the portion sizes to keep yourself in the right balance and the balance is the, the general guideline for carbs is you want to stay within about five grams plus or minus what your protein number is. So for example, I said on average you get about 18 to 25 grams of protein per serving. So if you just want to take the middle of that, it's what, 21. So figure, go in with 21. So you can have 16, so that's 21 minus five, 16 grams of protein up to 21 plus five would be 26. So there's your window of serving per carb in your meal and you wanna work that in with your package. So if you're thinking, okay, I wanna have some chicken and I wanna have a serving of this gluten-free rotini that is uh, made out of uh, corn flour and quinoa, so that would be something that would be approved for Ignite. And then I want to have a big salad. The salad's going to be all free stuff, but all of your carbs are going to come from your pasta. This is how you're going to know how much of this box of pasta you can have. So when I look at whatever my pasta, my packaged pastas are that are made from different ingredients, um, this one says there are four servings in the box. I'm gonna back up a second. Number one, you always wanna look at what the ingredients are. I have a couple samples here. This one's made of corn and quinoa. This one's made of cauliflower and lentil, all approved for Ignite. This one's made of all green beans. They all have different carb amounts per serving. So I have to pay very close attention. So I look at the ingredients to make sure they're all approved. Then I wanna go for carbs per serving. So in my rotini, the carbs are 46 grams per serving. 
Now, I just said the average we're looking around is plus or minus the 21. I want about 16 to 25 grams. So I know I can't have a full serving of this. If I cut the serving in half, that'll give me 23 grams. Awesome. So I need a half a serving. Now I go to the top and see how many servings are in this box or what do they say that a serving is. Now they're telling me a serving is about a quarter of the box. So I know for me to keep in PFC balance, my serving size is an eighth of a box. And I'm not gonna count all this out. I'm not gonna see how many little noodles or do that. What I'm gonna say is, okay, I'm gonna cook half of the box. And then I'm gonna know that I have four serving or eight servings. And I kind of just look at the pot and I eyeball it and separate it out that way. And I know generally it's gonna be good. So just be really careful, be very mindful because prepared foods, even if they're made out of corn and quinoa or lentils and cauliflower can still have protein, or excuse me, the carbs that are a little weird. So this pasta right here that's out of the lentils and the cauliflower, it has 34 grams of carbs. This one with the green beans has 21 carbs. So this one, like a full serving of this one is gonna get me spot on. So I would just have to pay attention to how much of this package is actually a serving. So that is just the caution that I would give. You are welcome. It's approved. It's on the list as long as your um, what you're having fits in and it's approved. If you're not sure, ask a question. What's what we're here for? And I can help you work through the numbers. That's my jam. I love to do that. So um, that way I know that we're spot on. And sometimes um, then if you, you get a little more creative and mix it up and you'll find your favorites. Um, if it's rice, brown rice is the preferred one. Go for the handful. And if you, if you add lemon zest to your brown rice, it tastes really good. I can add that too. And that's free. <laughs> no carbs. Did that make sense, Mel? Or did that, was that too confusing? That's a mouthful. Uh, that's really good. Like, I'm so proud of you to be able to do all of that. I know I could do it too if I just sat down and actually did it, right? It doesn't sound that difficult to actually do it once yeah. you actually said it, like all the information yeah. you just gave. It kind of makes it sound a little bit easier now. Um, but yeah, so I think that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm happy to repeat that for anybody. The, the thing is I don't want you guys to be afraid of foods and I don't want you to think, oh, I can never have a pasta again, because right. that's not the case. There are pastas that we can work into this. Just knowing what the right portion is and sticking to that is key. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it's so easy to get too much of it. Right. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to yeah. It's really, it, I hopefully I didn't want to confuse anybody, but again, I'm happy to repeat it. And if, if that's something that's your thing um, and you really want help with that, Absolutely, I am here to help. Um, just look at my notes to make sure I didn't, re I just want to remind you actually. So on the Ignite phase, just a reminder, if you, if your goal really is to meet, have your weight loss as cleanly and quickly as possible, I suggest staying away from the packages yep. just for a little bit longer. And really, you're going to maximize your results by sticking to fresh fruits and vegetables and getting all your carbs there. So there's that. Absolutely. Okay, next section, fats. Fats, all right. So a few things on the fats. So when you're using your oils, um, sometimes uh, people have asked you know, how much to use. So for your oils, I like almond oil, um, so almond oil, coconut oil, and my olive oil. Those are my two favorites. And you want a half a tablespoon when you're using that. So oh, you glitched out. How much was that? Oh, half a tablespoon. Half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you always want to make sure, like, if you're pouring it in your salads, that's all great. If you're going to put it in a frying pan, you want to try to always put it at the end of your cooking, right? So the flavor is still in the frying pan. You haven't, uh, it hasn't burned all off and turned into you know, your bad fats, right? So you wanna put it in at the end of your uh, cooking. The nut butters, you want about a tablespoon. And I like almond butter and my crunchy peanut butter, my organic peanut butter. So those are my two faves. Yum. 
right? <laughs> uh, for your nuts, you want a half an ounce. And always read the labels with the nuts because they there's a variety. They often show uh, many nuts are um, the weight. You have to look at the ratios, right? So um, one ounce, if you take one ounce, sorry, divide it in half. So my bag of raw almonds says there's about 28 nuts in one ounce serving. So that would give me about 14 nuts that I can have per serving, right? Not too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I find too, like if I take if I take almonds, I might, I mean, you can buy the slivered almonds, but a lot of times I'll have the whole almonds and I'll just kind of chop it up. And then it makes me think that there's more in there. Uh, <laughs> so it's it, funny because I like them whole. I think there's more if they're whole. <laughs> Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so you can do that. And uh, for avocado, uh, you, you want about a quarter of a medium avocado. All right. And then you have your flaxseed, meal, chia seeds, and your olive. You always want to read the labels for those. Definitely. Um, and in general, our fat goal is to stay within the seven to nine grams per meal. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not sure how much, whatever your fat choice is, if you're not sure how much you can really have, just look at the serving size on the bottle, the jar, the container, whatever it comes in, and then do the math backwards to, so that you're in the seven to nine range per meal. Yeah. And what if, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I just want to say, don't, don't freak out. Like, you know, <laughs> If you have a tablespoon, I was eating the wrong amount of coconut oil for like two years because I love it and I didn't, I thought I was right. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't even doing that right. And I still got results. So yeah. no big deal. So what about salad dressings? Oh, that's a really good question. And it's a, I would have to say it's a big, um, it's just a wasteland for fat, in my opinion, if you want to think of it that way, especially for people that are focused on losing weight. That's a huge group to just not do. Uh, personally, I rarely even put my oil in my salad because I would prefer to eat, I prefer crunchy. So I would like, I want it like in a nut form. I like the avocado, although I do, uh, coconut oil is my one thing that I will use. But anyway, um, if you want to have the fat in your meal, be drizzled on your salad in the form of olive oil, avocado oil, sesame oil, whatever your flavor is, that's okay. But just realize that's your fat then. So if you're having beef, if you're having salmon, if you're having pork, those three proteins are considered high fat proteins that will consume your protein and your fat for that meal. So you don't, have, you don't choose something else from the fat column if those are your proteins. Um, if what I do with my salads, and it, this was a really easy thing to stop, I, is I always have um, like some fresh, either lemon juice, like squirt some fresh ju citrus juice on there, or make sure I have some fruit in there, have some tomato, have something, a vegetable that's a little juicy. So that adds a little bit of um, liquid, juiciness, wetness, I don't know what the right, white word to use is. It's not a dry, dry salad. Um, and then that way, that's kind of taken care of. Uh, so I don't want to smother my salad and dressing. If I go, we go out to dinner, I will maybe order a salad dressing on the side and just dip my fork in it. Like I always order on the side, dip my fork in the container before I take my bite. And then I feel like I'm getting a little treat because I'm eating something that I don't normally eat. And I do like dressing. I just choose not to have that for my fat right now. So watch out for that. That's a good idea. I like that dipping your fork into the, yeah. into the salad dressing. That's really good. I like to add with my salads, I like to add, um, uh, so my ground meat will go in. I'll do, if I'm doing a vegetable carb, so it could be mango, strawberries, or grapes, or whatever like that. And I'll even, I'll put my rice in there, and my quinoa, like everything all goes in there. You put rice in your salad? Yep. <laughs> yep. And I, I tell you, it's be since before Zen, I never did that. And I'm just trying, because I try to think of how do I get my salad to be nice and bulk and filling. Oh, and smart. Everything goes in there, meat, rice, quinoa, whatever, if I, whatever I choose. Yeah. I've even done, I've even done um, 
sweet mashed sweet potatoes and I've put it in there and mixed it in my salad. It may sound gross to some people, but it's actually really good. And yeah, it works. So I'm going to have to try that. That's it's perfect. Good one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Learning with Mel. I love it. That's awesome. And you know, uh, Tina was telling me the other day she was putting sausage in her salad. Yeah. Uh, I've never done that either. So yeah. anything goes. That's, you know what, when, when it's meal time, pick your P, pick your F, pick your C, put it together. Sometimes it's an unusual combination and you might find a new flavor, a new mixture that you really like that you wouldn't have thought of because it's not the traditional pasta with spaghetti sauce on it. I don't yeah. know. So. And, with the, and with this program, like you really taste your foods. So when you're having your salad, it's like, oh, I had the cherry tomatoes or your mango or your apple or you know, your, your peppers, whatever you're having, it's like you really taste the food now. When you're smothering it with salad dressing, you don't taste anything. It's just Good salad point. dressing. Yeah, right? taste buds are coming alive. Okay, yeah. I want to mention, um, just I looked at the clock, and we I, these are so fun to do, but I don't want to, I'm trying to not make them too long either. So I wanted to talk quickly about our shakes. Is that okay? Is yeah. that is it good timing for that? Because, um, we're getting questions about these two and how to, I don't want to confuse people in turning them into unbalanced recipes. So we talked about the volumes that the goal of how much P, how much F and how much C in each meal. And so know that your Zen fused shakes, they're already balanced the way they're coming to you, but there is a little wiggle room to add some extra carbs in here or some extra fat if you want to, I highly suggest, again, if your goal is to shrink as much as possible, as soon as possible, only use water with these and some free stuff. But if it's nighttime or if you want to treat, if you want something that's a little extra, um, that feels a little bit more special, then there's a little wiggle room in here because I'm going to remind you <laughs> that protein in here, 21 grams of protein, three grams of fat, and these come with about 15 grams of carbohydrates. So we said already, fat, you can go seven to nine grams. So if you wanted to put a little peanut mm -hmm. butter, if you wanted to put a little coconut oil, if you wanted, you know, mixing it in your pudding, it's A-OK -okay to do that. Just don't put a whole serving you want to put a half a serving of another fat in here. And if you haven't tried um, powdered peanut butter before, that is something, if you're a peanut butter fan, easily add to the shakes. You get your peanut butter flavor without all the fat. So that would be something to add here and keeping it still in really good PFC balance. And then on the carbs, there is some room to add some fruit. A lot of people like fruit in their shakes and that's A-OK, -okay, but again, not a full serving because you're already coming with 15 grams. You have, you can put maybe another five to 10 grams of uh, fruit in here and still keep it PFC balanced. So half a serving of fruit is what you can add in there and then you're getting that all nice. So when you're making things out of that, um, keep that as a guideline and again, ask lots of questions. And I know Mel, you wanted to say something about the protein bars. Yeah, we want to be very cautious with them. Um, there are some good ones out there, but for now, try and leave them out of your program. Okay, you don't need them until after the Thrive phase, I would say. Um, I didn't use them at all in the whole two months I did the program. Um, it's best not to, just to get the good results. Yeah, so, yeah. And I understand, you know, sometimes life gets wacky and if you're stuck, you know, in traffic or if you're stuck somewhere that you didn't expect to be and you're not prepared, yeah, you want to go find your best balanced one for an emergency. But really, until we get to the thrive phase, it really is best to just not incorporate those into your meals yet. Yeah. So awesome. Is there, um, do you think we covered everything pretty good? And I, I meant to be able to look for questions, but I forgot to turn that on so I can't see if anybody's asking. I noticed that we didn't have any. <laughs> I forgot the live stuff. Okay, so in closing, we'd like to just wrap up. Please, please, please ask us questions if you're not sure.
drop them in the uh, groups and do a hashtag question and then we'll be alerted to them faster so we can respond because um, we want to make sure to give you everybody as much support as possible and help you reach your goals and uh, it's you know if you're stuck in the middle of a recipe and you're not sure uh, make sure to get that question in there quickly and we can hopefully help you navigate that and also you can do a lot of the math yourself just by googling um, how many grams of x or how many grams of protein or carb or fat are in then whatever food you're looking to put into your recipe or your meal and then you can do the math yourself and figure out what the right amount is for where you are and um, we would love for you guys to share recipes so any new things that you're coming up with that you think are super yummy uh, we love learning from you also so please 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 share those and then um, just don't be afraid we want you to uh, don't think oh i don't know what to do with this so i'm going to stick to the same three meals all the time and then you might be starting to think like this is this this doesn't have enough variety for me i can't do this so it really uh, there's a lot of uh, forgiveness in this, you know, general weighing, measuring over the long run, you're going to be A-OK -okay and you're going to see results. So that would be uh, my two cents. What would you Perfect. like to add, Mel? Uh, well, we have coming up is our three day challenge. So Yay, we're going to do another challenge. Another challenge. So you're going to look for the announcements. Um, inside the, it's only eight weeks. Yes, um, these are people that are on plan, yeah. Right, that they're on the plan. Yeah. Um, when it starts, what you'll win, what you have to do. It's a secret. Look for the details. They're gonna be dropping tomorrow for sure because the challenge starts on Thursday and everybody can do it. You don't have to get anything extra. Nothing is super hard is required, so, um, but it's gonna be fun. So look sure. for that there. And this has been great. I hope it's, I hope we, you have found lots of value in this. Drop value if you have questions. Put them maybe right here in the chat for this masterclass and we'll be able to find them here easily. Uh, and reach out, please. It, when you have questions, let us know so we can help you stay on track and help you reach your goals. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye.